Hello everyone, and welcome to a special episode of Crafty Beer Reviews. Today we are doing a really, really fucking awesome thing. This is episode 100, I am joined by Rob, and we are going to be doing five different beers. I have a vertical setup of Stone Old Guardian. It is their barley wine, and we have 2009 all the way up to the class release of 2013. Just came out a few weeks ago. Five beers from five different years. That's right. So, to celebrate 100 reviews, we're doing this. Let's go ahead and crack in the first one. Thank you, sir. Now, the ABVs have changed each year, so I'll have to look at them each time. I think this one's 11.6. Yeah, this is the 2013, this is 11.6. We're only going to do small pours initially because, uh, well, we got a lot of beer to drink, obviously. Alright. Thank you. You're welcome. Alright, so that pours out a pretty nice amber color. Kind of a typical look for a barley wine. Although it's slightly lighter side though, actually. But uh, you got a little bit of head, I didn't really get any. Pretty typical for such a high ABV beer. But let's go ahead and take our first sniff. Wow. Right off the bat, definitely get a lot of citrus, some kind of piney hops, slightly tropical. I get a little bit of alcohol, but not much. Like, it's not bad. It tastes just like I remember it. Yep. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and take my first sip. Very fresh. Very piney. Yeah, right. when this beer... When you get this beer fresh, it is real hoppy. Like, this is more of an American style, obviously, as opposed to the English style. A lot of hops. A lot of citrus. Tropical. Almost like a mango, papaya type of taste. You get a little bit of, like, some caramel malt. Not much, there's like a slight alcohol burn. Not bad for 11.6, can't really taste it too much though. Yeah, it's really, really, really tasty. sticks to your glass. Yeah, like it's really, really hot pungent when it starts out. Yeah. Great beer. Well, you ready to move on to 2012? Let's do it. All right. Alright, and this is the 2012, and this one clocks in at 11%, so a little bit weaker. You can't really call it 11% people weak, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been aging for a year. I mean, you know, you can call it weak if you're not call it. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You keep on giving me head. <laughs> that is intentional, of course. Now, this one smells a lot more malt forward. Definitely. I get Definitely. caramel, almost like toffee, a little bit, like a lot more sweetness. I get some slightly piney hop, almost like a tea leaf. It's like when the hops get a bit older. But it's a lot It's a lot more diminished than the previous year. Yeah, real malty though. Um, get, like, I don't really get any dark fruit, but I'd say it's just really like caramel, toffee, pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and take our first sip. Wow, that's actually really interesting. Even though there wasn't much hop smell, there's still a decent amount of bitterness. Now, it's, it's definitely a, mellowed out, I think. It's a big difference, though. So yeah. It's not as much hop forward. You get it on the back end. Yeah, you get it right at the back end. It's actually still fairly dry, too, I think. Loads of, loads of caramel in this batch. It's much sweeter, but the bitterness really helps to balance it out. Like, it's not cloyingly bitter. It's not cloyingly sweet, either. It's just a really balanced beer. The hops have faded considerably. I mean, obviously, a year's going to do that. Mm. Yeah, that's really good, though. Just big, big difference. All right. And we have cups of Miller Lite here to wash our palates. No, I'm just getting this water. Okay, and this is the 2011, and this one is 12%, so going a bit higher here. And you want to serve all of these at about 55 degrees. These are slightly cooler just because we figured by the time we get through them, obviously it's going to be a little bit too warm if we serve them that, so they're slightly cooler. 
Wow, wow now that is interesting. That's a big difference. I smell almost no hops. Yeah, I get like no pininess, no like tea leaf character. Third year in and it's almost all caramel, all toffee. I do get a slight amount of what almost smells like a like a slight plum or fig note though. Like some very slight dark fruit. Wow. Yeah. Very malt forward. It still retains a bitterness though. Surprisingly enough, I would say this is the most mellow of the bat so far though. Like there is a little bit of some hop bitterness right at the back end, but very malt forward, more caramel, toffee, a little bit of dark fruit, but not too much. This one also feels the heaviest in my opinion. Like the other one seemed a little lighter on the mouthfeel, and this one seems real creamy. Like it's not, as, it's not as dry. It's not as dry. It's a lot more creamy for the mouthfeel, but really good. Just almost no hops, pretty much. It's more like a, an English style barley wine, I think, a lot less than like a, an American one. It definitely sticks with you. And this too, even though it's twelve percent, it definitely feels the lightest alcohol wise. Like that's mellowed out really, really nice. Well, you don't get the bitterness, so you don't feel the burn as much, and mm -hmm. you know it, it doesn't seem as alcoholic, even though it is the most. Yeah, yeah. I mean. If you pour this in a glass, I don't think I'd say 12%, maybe like somewhere in the nines, I'd say, just because it's a barley wine, but real, real nice. Almost no burn. Yeah, it's real, real slight, like 12%, pretty well in. The only burn I get is in my nostrils when I breathe out. Yeah. It does, doesn't feel like 12%, though, that's the crazy thing. All right, guys, so we're moving on to the 2010, and this one comes in at 11.1. .1. As you can also see, the artwork's changed a little bit at this point. They all poured out, I'd say, pretty much the same color. This one looks like it might be slightly darker. But they've all pretty much poured out the Not exact by same. Much, though. No, just like a shade lighter, I'd say. A nice deep amber. Yep. Very clear too. Almost no head <laughs> on this beer. Wow. No alcohol. No hops. All malt. Oh. <laughs> all malt. Dirty malt too. Yeah. Not clean. Not not clean at all. Like, it's got a really, really, like, strong caramel, toffee, I would say, like... Musty. Almost yeah. Almost musty. Yeah. Like, it almost, it almost has, like, an oak component, it almost seems. Like, almost, mm -hmm. like, oaky. You can tell it's starting to get old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the hops have completely faded. All right. Let's go ahead and take our sip, man. Wow. That's sweet. That is definitely the sweetest so far. Least alcohol, like there's no bite. I mean, obviously we've been drinking a little bit, so that's probably gonna be part of it, <laughs> but. No hops whatsoever. It almost tastes like butterscotch. Like a butterscotch snow, it's creamy. Coffee, Carl. It's creamy. It is really creamy. Like this, like again, it seems to be getting further away from the American style and gradually changing into more of like an English style barley wine. Wow. I can't get over the smell. Not very much bitterness. Again, it's a creamier mouthfeel. It's not as dry, but wow. Still really good. So far, though, I'm not sure if this one I would say is my favorite. I think I might like this one slightly more just because it did yes. still have enough bitterness to kind of balance it out. At this point, this one seems like it's almost getting a little too sweet. Like, I don't think I could have a whole bottle in this. But yeah, I'd, I'd say so far the 2011 is definitely my favorite. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I mean, because I love a good hoppy bar on the one, but we'll save our judgments when we get to the last one. But this is just, it's much thicker. It's like I got much more of like a, vit, you know, like a really thick mouthfeel. I can't get over the aroma you get out of that cup. 
Seems like a completely changed beer at this point. All right, final beer, guys. So this is the 2009. This is the only one I didn't actually sell her. Uh, for Beer Week, Cleveland Beer Week back in 2011, they released this. It had been seller at Stone, and they sent it out to a store. And this one comes in at 11.3. So strongest was 12, weakest was 11. Well, weakest was 11 percent. So definitely bounce around with the uh, ABV on these. Now this one actually has almost like a golden hue to it. It's it, you know also it doesn't look very clear. Like it looks like a lot more muddy, a lot more kind of thick. Oh yeah, it's almost orange and, and dark orange. Yeah, it's got a real different color from the very first one, actually. Well, let's go ahead and take our sniff. Oh. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> that is really crazy. It's pungent. <laughs> it's really pungent, like... It even, without tasting it, it smells sweet. It smells really sweet. I don't know if it's going to taste good. Like, it smells caramel, toffee. I would say a really strong, like, like a butterscotch. Like, kind of like the 2010, but probably more intense. A little bit of almost, like, again, it kind of almost has this weird, like, oaky, not like oak, but it's just like a woody type of smell. It almost smells, like, rotten. Rotten? Yeah. I don't get rotten, but like old, old and distinguished and rotten, like some, oh, some, some fruit that has just been sitting there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't really get rotten, but it's like it's really. I mean, it's all malt, obviously, at this point. I don't know. It smells real interesting. Let's go ahead and take our first sip. Wow. So far, I would say this actually might might be my least favorite. Like, it, the mouthfeel is actually not creamy. I wouldn't say it's dry. It's almost kind of thin at it, this point. It leaves you so quickly. Like, it's almost got a thin mouthfeel. Um, you know, the, no, it's real It's real malty, but it's almost... It's not nearly as complex as the others. There's no presence. It, it leaves you with no handshake, no goodbye, no thank you, <laughs> nothing. It, yeah. You, you drink it and it's gone. There's nothing left. I would say the biggest plus to this one is the fact that you can't taste 11.3%. I mean, that's a huge beer, and you really don't get that. So, But yeah, it, it's really just, it almost just tastes mainly like caramel, like older caramel malt. So, I mean, obviously 2009 oxidation has taken a greater effect than with any of these, but I'd say this is probably my least favorite so far out of the bunch. No, I wouldn't necessarily classify it as a bad beer, but I think maybe five years would be a little long That's to its keep limit. It. That's its limit. I think four years is probably more preferable if you're going to do something. Five seems a little long just because it's pretty much caramel. Very, very sweet. Like, I would say this is cloyingly sweet. And then it's got a real thin mouthfeel compared to the rest of them. No, I, I found the store that had the 07 and the 08, and I'm, I'm pretty glad that... I wasn't able to get them now yeah. because this 09, it just, it doesn't do it justice to doesn't the hold, batches. Yeah, it doesn't hold up the same way as the other ones do. Like, I would say if you're going to age it, maybe go four years max. Even then, though, I think personally, the 2011 may, in fact, be my favorite of the bunch thus far. It's somewhere in the middle because it's not overly hoppy, but it had, it's starting to kind of develop like slight dark fruit sweetness but it's balanced whereas this is just so tastes a little bit you know should we rate them yeah let's let's do like an individual rating um let's go ahead and pour out a little bit more in each real quick and we'll see but so far i'm thinking that uh i'm thinking that maybe the 2011 is going to be the winner here but we'll see You can even kind of, you can even see the color changing. Like it's going, it goes from dark, darker, dark, <laughs> and then that one's got a weird, like more almost it's orange. Cloudy. It's not very cloudy, so that that is interesting. All right, 
Look at how thin this is. Yeah. Compared it's very clear. Those. It's very clear. It's very bright. It's got a nice amber. And the amber slowly darkens to about here, and then gets lighter, which is a little weird. Like, the 2010 is probably the darkest, but then the 2009 is the lightest. You can hardly see the stem in this glass. It's almost completely opaque. Yep. And in that one, it's real bright for whatever, which is kind of weird. You'd think it would be the darkest of the bunch. So, again, real, real hobby. Let's cleanse. Yeah. Good point. Very hoppy, very very West Coast hoppy, like piney, tropical fruit. Not sweet. Malt's pretty hidden. Malt's pretty hidden. And then we're gonna go with the 2012 here. Again, more more caramel, more toffee, less hops, but they're still present. A little bit more sweet, but not bad. Yeah, 2011 still got hot bitterness, still but still got piney. I'd say the tropical aspects have faded. But then it has the caramel malt, the toffee, the butterscotch. It's so well balanced. And it, and it has, like I said, this one has like slight like plum fig type notes. Like very slight. I wouldn't say it's like huge dark fruit, but they are there. So far, like I said, I think this one's probably my favorite of the bunch. I'm going to be so full of water and beer. Before it stay hydrated. Alright, so now we're down to the 2010 again. Drink Miller Light in between <laughs> sips. Exactly. And yeah, and this is where like the real strong butterscotch, zero hops. You do get a lot of like real sweet caramel malt. Still leaves, I would say, a, just a, a tiny, tiny bit of bitterness, but overall not much. I get all cream. It's got a real, the the mouthfeel on this one I think is probably the best. It's a mouthfeel, but the flavor is not. The, it's the thickest, but the eleven is still much better in the overall feel because you get you get the hoppiness just a tiny bit, and then you get the caramel malt. Right. You get the a little bit of the dark fruit, a little bit of the toffee. Yep. Yeah, but yeah, that so far I think twenty eleven is probably gonna be the winner. But let's go ahead and revisit the uh, two thousand and nine. Cloudy darkness. Yeah, again, just caramel malt, a little bit of butterscotch, that's really about it. But even from here, it smells cooling. Like, without tasting, it just smells like it's going to be a really sweet beer. Yeah, no hot bitterness. Very thin mouthfeel, which is weird, because they start getting a little bit thicker up until this point. But it drops off significantly. To, to beyond the point of the original release. Yeah, the, the like 2013. It, it tastes like a completely different beer. Um, all right, so you want to go ahead and sign ratings? Um, I guess let's go ahead and start with the 2013. 2013, I love a good hoppy American-style barley wine. I'm going to go with a 4.6 on this one. It is one of my favorite fresh beers like to drink. You know, even though I've aged them, I think it's great fresh. What about you? I'm going to go with 4.3. It was very hop forward, very delicious, but it's not one of my favorite barley wines. It's going to get a 4.3. All right. For the 2012, um, I think I'm going to go with a slightly lower one. I'm going to go with a 4.4. I think it's still a good beer. At this point, though, I think that it's kind of, it's like in limbo. It, you know, it's not too malty. It's not too hoppy. So it's not it, like one note doesn't come out more than the other, I'd say. It's a teenager. It hasn't quite... Matured. Fully developed. It, it hasn't quite matured enough. Right. And it's still trying to figure out its lifespan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad beer by any means. It's still really enjoyable. It's just, it's in between, like, being malty and hoppy. It's not quite, you know, deciding which but one. The the both of it are combating each other. They're not complementing each other. Yeah, yeah. Because you can kind of, you can taste the hops separate from the malt. They don't really blend. Um, right. What would you give a rating for it? I'm going four. Okay. I'm going four. Four. All right, so 
We are down to the 2011 then. Um, for that one, I think I'm going to go a 4.7. Uh, I do like it more than this. I wouldn't say that it's a perfect five. Obviously, there's you know, it's not the most complex. It's not the best barley wine in the world, but it's a really fucking solid beer. Like it's really, really good. It does have you know, it has a big malt profile, so it's like caramel, toffee, very, very tiny amount of like a butterscotch flavor starting to develop. It does have the piney hops. It's slightly bitter, so it's kind of dry, kind of creamy. That's my favorite one of the group so far. I'm agreeing with you 100%, except on your rating. I'm going to 4.8. Yeah? This is one of my favorite barley wines that I've tasted so far. 4.8, because it's not perfect. It's not hoppy enough for my taste. Everybody has their own palate. But this this is a damn good combination of malt and hops and just great flavor combinations right here. Age it for two years. Let it be. This is amazing. Yep, yep. Definitely agree. 2011, best of the batch. Um, for the 2010, I found that one just to be, I don't know, it's very mall forward, which is not a bad thing. Obviously, the hops have fallen out considerably at this point. However, it still retains just enough bitterness to not make it cloyingly sweet. However, the dominant notes are more of the butterscotch, caramel, toffee, you know, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, not a bad beer, but I'm going to go with a four for it. It's a solid offering. And it, you know, it's worth trying, but it's not my favorite. And I'm, I'm going to drop it off. You know, everybody has their own palate, but I'm giving it a 3.7. Just because my, my palate is derived directly in hops, and I'll be the first to admit it. it that just, is true. It's, it's not hop forward. It's very caramely. It's very toffee. It's a great beer, but it's just not what I'm looking for in a barley wine. So I'm going to give it a 3.7. Yep, that's fair enough. All right, so we are down to the last beer, the 2009. This one is an easy three for me. I wouldn't say that it's a bad beer, but it's not great. It's not terrible. It's, you know, the body is just, it's so light. The th you know, it's got a thin mouthfeel. It's, it's pretty too long. Yeah, it's pretty much just caramel, all hops faded. It's, it's almost a bit of a mess at this point. I wouldn't say it's a bad beer. It's just, it's nothing great. It's a very, it's I would not say. infected. No. Just... Don't don't age your stone barley wine this long. I, and I think it's partly because it is an American style, so it started off so hoppy, and I think just without the hops at all, without any little hint of bitterness, not good. And it pretty much only tastes like caramel at this point. Like, like just pretty much caramel malt, maybe slight butterscotch, but that's kind of pushing it, in my opinion. So I'm going to go with three. So you'll give it a three. I'll give it about a, a two and a half. And that's that's generous for me. It, it wasn't incredibly hard to drink but it wasn't incredibly easy um the, don't age your stone barley wine this long <laughs> yeah yeah i like, think i think maximum i would say four probably drink beneficial i would say that probably the best years get it fresh it it drinks amazing fresh and then i would say two years one year it's just kind of in limbo so i would say definitely fresh or two years is the best time to drink and they're all guardian. If you have the funds, buy a case and drink a bottle every three to six months. And that's what they suggest on, you know, the box, which is maybe something I should have done, so I would know five years isn't a great time period. But, you know, that's kind of the fun of craft beer and trying different, excuse me, vintages. So, you know, um, I don't think there's really anything else I can say about it. Well, we decided is... Two years is a good time for Old Guardian. Yep, yep, two years is fantastic. Especially if you guys don't like too hoppy of a barley wine, that's probably a good year to age it. But um, this was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Glad we got to do it. It was real fucking hard to hold on to this for five years. <laughs> or well, forward, technically. But it was it was really difficult to do this. So glad we got to do it. But um, yeah, that's going to do it for us. We're going to get back Solid. to this. I guess we're probably going to end up drinking the 2011 for anything else, and we'll see you later.